readers. This lesson is a reminder lesson about some of the important things to keep in mind when you are writing about your reading, especially when you're writing about your reading in preparation for partner talk or book club discussions. So before we jump into today's lesson, let's just take a second to think about what has it been like so far to write about reading in a totally remote or blended learning environment. I know that for me, it's been hard to part, part with my post-its. I love post-its, but I've been loving the Google Keep setup because I now just have basically just stacks and stacks of digital post-its. What's it been like for you? What's been tricky about it? Not having maybe even a physical text in front of you this time around. Maybe you miss your digital reader's note, your, your physical reader's notebook and you're using a digital one. What's it been like? What do you like about it? What's kind of hard still? So now that you have that in mind, maybe you're picturing it, we'll just take a second to self-assess what we've been doing so far. You might have seen this chart before. It comes from one of the fifth grade units, interpretation book clubs. And just take a moment to look at it and think, what am I already doing? Or what am I doing most of the time? And then what could I be doing more of? Or what could I start doing now? As you, many of you know, I'm also in a book club with my own friends. And I've been in teacher book clubs. I've been in activist book clubs. And I'm just thinking about what I normally do in fiction book clubs. Well, whenever I know I'm going to have a meeting, I definitely read differently. I'm trying to see more. It totally changes the game when you know that you're about to meet with a book club or share your ideas with someone. And because I just think you take it more seriously, you're more invested, you're looking more closely at the details. And for me, I feel like that's the only time I really ask big questions is when I know that I'm going to be bringing you to a club. Hmm, maybe I could take that note to myself and say, maybe you need to start asking yourself questions, not just questions for your book club. Another thing I know I do a lot, especially in fiction, is I go in noticing specific story elements. I think a lot of us have already talked about, have already learned about or talked about reading with a specific lens in mind. I love doing this. I find it to be very helpful to pick a story element, focus on it, and then maybe trade ideas with a friend. Maybe I take turns with the story elements. Maybe I think about where I am in the story and what story elements make the most sense, but I definitely know I do these two things often. What do you do often? Maybe tell it to a neighbor, write it down, share it with me in a Google Keep, tell it to your furry friend that's with you at home. And now what have you not tried yet or you could do more of? I know that I often forget to push my ideas further. I sometimes just use writing about reading as a chance to explore an idea rather than to grow a brand new one or one that's maybe just connected. I also have really never tried the exploring my thinking, my, my voice as a reader. That's something I wanna keep thinking about. Right now, make a goal. What do you wanna to try today? And what do you wanna try in the next few days as you're continuing to write about your reading? When you've got it, we'll move forward. Today, I want to teach you that once readers have an idea, they ask themselves, where does this idea live in the text? And then they find those parts or passages and they reread them, thinking about how the part or passage will help them to explore or find new insight in their ideas. Thinking about things like, how might this, I, this part go with my idea or build onto my idea or help me develop a new idea. I'm gonna show you how I do this today by using some of my old jots from my side of the story. So right now, while I get my jots out, you might wanna get your jots out too. Maybe that means opening up your book because you actually have some post-its in your book. For me, that's gonna mean going on to Google Keep and just looking through a couple of my post-its in my book club book or my independent reading book or the book I've been reading most recently. So right now, I'm going to do exactly that. 
as I do it, you can do it too, alongside me. So I have a story I'm gonna use here, my side of the story. And again, I would probably be using my book club book today if I had a book club book, but I'm gonna be using this to model with because this is kind of like my book club book with you. And now opening Google Keep. This is just some of my recent Google Keep work. And I'm gonna just read over some of my jots. Okay, so I have a couple here. Let me just take a look at these and see, what was I thinking originally? Will seems like the kind of character that blames other people for his own problems. Oh, okay, I remember this now. So I was really trying to think about the kind of character Will was. That was my big goal the last time I was reading. Maybe you remember that too. So he's the kind of character that blames other people for his own problems, he gets upset so easily, is always looking to tattletale on others. Okay, let me keep reading and see if I find one that's especially exciting that I feel like I really wanna explore or add on to or find a new, some new insight for. The main character, Will, is obsessed with things being unfair, being fair. He talks about justice a lot and thinks that everyone in his life is treating him unfairly. Hmm. What else? I'm noticing that Will is really mad. Right now, he just seems like he's in a bad mood. I know this because he says, naturally, I was outraged. Okay. So one of the ideas I ha I'm left with is just this, uh, is, is, he, is it that he really thinks that everyone's unfair, like truly? Or is he just kind of like an angry person? I'm going to go with this one right here. Will seems like he's a kind of character that blames other people for his own problems. He gets upset so easily and is always looking to tattletale on others. He might be right. It might be that his brother is unfair, but I'm wondering if his goal is actually to achieve justice, or is it just that he, is it that he just wants to get his brother into trouble? No matter what, it seems like he is, very, he is a very ooh, unkind person, and he's definitely not very understanding. Okay. So here's what I'm gonna do now. This is the cool part, watch closely. Now that I have a jot that I like, I'm going to go to the little dots and I'm going to start to grow it by copying it into a Google Doc. Let me just back up. So I click on my jot so it becomes bigger. I go to the three little dots, copy to Google Docs. Open doc. Check this out. There's my jot. Isn't that so cool? Amazing. So now I have it already ready to go. I might even pick another color so that I know what's new today. Okay, I'll write in purple because it's my favorite. Great. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. And so now I'm gonna start going to some parts to see if I can really figure out what I was thinking and maybe add on or grow some new thinking about it. Okay, so where does this idea live in the text? There's probably a couple places. Will seems like the kind of character that blames other people for his own problems. He gets set so easily. Tattletales and others. Let me go back to the part where he tattletales. I feel like that's a good part to start, maybe the beginning of the story. Let's see what happens there. Brother comes in, puts tape in his face. Oh, okay, here's the part. Let me read this and see how might this part go with my idea? Remember my questions? How might this part go with my idea? Hmm. When I reached my mother's room, I saw the door was closed. For a moment, I hesitated, wondering if she was sleeping, but I was so sure of my case, so convinced of the general rightness of my mission. Now that I'm reading that again, it sounds like he's almost making fun of himself. Like he's talking about it in the past, which makes me think that he's like, and I, I kind of know that at this point, he's a pretty cynical or sarcastic person. Like he likes to make fun of things in kind of a mean but joking way. He was, he was, I was so convinced of 
the, the general rightness of my mission, but I threw open the door and burst into the room screaming. He's like over exaggerating for his own description of himself. I don't know. I feel like if you really believe that he was truly deeply wrong, then he would be like, it was terrible. Like I walked in, I didn't do anything wrong. I, you know, I politely asked like, mom, will you please help me? No, he's like, he's like making a show of himself. I didn't, I was so convinced. I went walking screaming. Let me read on to see if I can add on to this new thinking that maybe he is looking back and realizing that he wasn't always in the right, that he was kind of maybe at fault. Let's see. And then I realized I was talking to my father. Oh, right. So he gets really scared about his dad being there and said, not my mother. In order to understand the enormity of the mistake I've made, you have to understand my father. Again, he's giving like a lot of explanation, a lot of detail, which makes me feel like he's doubting himself. Do you see what I'm doing? I went back to the part that I thought maybe could fit with my thinking. Now I'm thinking, how does this fit? And rather than just like kind of using it to prove my idea, I'm actually letting it open up my idea a bit. So now I need to go back to my Google Keep and the add on. Maybe I'll just start by going here. I'll just jump right in. Okay, let's just jump right in. Okay, looking back at the story, for instance, in the when Will goes to Tattletail Feather, noticing that he is being very or giving very dramatic description. Of the way he behaved. For instance, so remember this part today is about really grounding your ideas. So I don't want to just like talk around the idea. I want to like give the evidence to make sure it sounds really clear, grounded, rooted in the story. So I'm going to give the exact evidence if I can, even in my job. Okay, I'm just gonna, for instance, he says, or he describes walking to tell his mom, as so convinced of the general rightness of my mission threw open the door and burst into the room screaming. Okay. I did it. I added my thing. I added the text detail. But now what? How do I make it like really clear that this is not just grounded in the text, but this could be like new insight? Well, whenever I'm stuck, I always, always use a thought prompt. And today you will have the chance to use the thought prompts I've posted for you in our new Padlet. So if you're on the Padlet, you might go over to thought prompts and pick one. See if something is there that could help you really add on or explain your thinking, especially when you get to that part where like, oh, wow, there is some new insight. I'm, I have some new insight here. So I'm looking at this. Is there anything I can use to help me really summarize, like say what I mean? Hmm. To mind the specifics of the passage. Okay, so maybe it's saying something like what the, the words he chooses and what they can mean. It's interesting the way, let me try that. That sounds really professional. So maybe it's something like this. It's interesting 
that he chooses such dramatic words because often when people are on the defense, they don't try to make themselves found out to be wrong. However, Bill doesn't shy away from that. This makes me think Maybe he was in the wrong after all. And that this story is about, do you see where I'm like getting bigger and bigger? Just from going back, finding a part that fits, but not only fits, like pushes it. I remember that was like my goal for the day was to push my thinking a bit further. I'm really going with it. That piece of text evidence on the page just like opened up so many doors. And look, I'm writing another paragraph now. So today what I want you to do is I want you to try these exact same steps. I just to remind you exactly what I did. I practice growing my ideas by having some ideas in my head first, looking around my Google Keeps, thinking about what's interesting or what really stuck, stuck, uh, stuck with me so far. And then once I get an idea or grab onto one, I think, where does this idea live in the text? I opened up my Google Doc. I then put it on the page. And I had to reread to find a part. Or maybe two, I, you could add another part. I find a part that really shows or grounds the ideas in the text. And then I thought, how might this part go with my idea or even expand my idea? And I just let myself push it a bit further. One way you can do the pushing part to expand is just to use some of the thought prompts that are readily, readily available to you already on the Padlet. If you get stuck, if you aren't pushing or thinking as far as you, you would have hoped, use the Padlet, grab a thought prompt, and just try it out. When you are done today, what I would love for you to do is I would love for you to upload this to Google Classroom and also share it with me in Google Docs. So send it to my email, hmeadhcps. Go ahead and share, and you're done. Once you've done this, in your book club book, you can then continue reading on, and I will check in with you soon. Enjoy. I can't wait to see these big ideas you come up with.